Hi everyone, it's Tanya from Cup of Cha. Today we're talking about shopping for quality tea. So why should you buy quality tea? There's three really good reasons why you should consider quality loose leaf tea. The first one is from an ethical point of view. There's usually a transparency in the sourcing and so this allows for better work conditions for the tea farmers and everyone within the supply chain. The second option, uh, the second reason is that there's usually better value for money because the commodity tea is a one single use where with loose leaf uh, tea you have multiple infusions so you can drink tea all day long with the same set of leaves. And the third one and the most important reason to buy quality tea is it tastes really great. There's really no other reason to be honest that's the best one. Now you say the next question I'm often asked is well how do I pick quality tea? Where can I find quality tea out there? And sadly that is a little bit harder and that's the topic of our conversation today. Within Australia there's a lot of very poor or average tea out there and you're probably paying far too much for it. It's being sold as quality tea but you're probably paying too much. But now we're going to look at all the factors that you should and the questions you should be asking your tea supplier to help you identify better quality tea. So let's get into it. So this channel is about helping you find those amazing teas and that's why today one aspect of finding amazing teas is your tea supplier. And why should your tea supplier have a sound knowledge of the teas that they're supplying you? Is because there's so many different grades of tea across the different continents that grow tea. It can be so confusing even for the best of us. There's also some amazing teas, very famous teas out there that are famous because of the quality of the unique flavor and also the growing, the way the tea farmer grows it and their very special process as well. So these teas can command some very, very high pricing. And it's not unusual to see teas up around $2,000 a kilo. So with these sort of prices, you can have fake teas. Yes, fake teas, just like fake handbags, fake clothing, fake jewelry. You know, there is a massive market for it. Some of the classics are your Oriental Beauty out of Taiwan, the Milk Oolong as well from Taiwan, Long Jing is another example of it, a very famous Chinese green tea. And the difference is these particular teas that I have mentioned to you come from particular cultivars, particular regions and with unique flavours. Now the fake ones don't have the same type of flavours. Now they could be actually quite good fakes and they're very good teas within their own right but they can't command the same price as these other teas. And so they're relabeled um, and to achieve those higher prices. So you could be paying far too much for a tea that's quite a nice tea, but you're paying too much because it's labeled as Oriental Beauty or it's labeled as a long jean. Some teas are not so famous, but they're also really great teas. But if your tea supplier can't give you some background to that tea, we don't hear about these teas very often because they're not famous, they're often consumed very quickly within their own province. And so very rarely we get to see these teas. But your tea supplier can give you a lot of information about them so you can feel comfortable in paying that little bit more for the tea. The internet has an amazing ability to be able to spread a lot of knowledge but also the internet has opened up a world of great and bad tea suppliers. So unless you can trust your tea supplier you could be buying any of these fake teas and you're not going to know because you feel like you're sourcing it direct but there's a good chance you not sourcing it direct. So you feeling confused? Well, the majority of us feel confused at times. I have, through the time I've been in the tea industry, developed relationships with very honest and reliable tea mentors, and it's their knowledge and expertise that help me. I also work with other tea people, tea heads, 
and we get together and we're always trying different teas and looking at the leaves and examining and studying the cultivars. But if you're not looking at tea that way and you just want to enjoy tea and you want to enjoy these different flavours, then you have to rely on your tea supplier to be providing this information for you and to providing you with a great quality tea at a reasonable price. So let's look at the things that I believe that your tea supplier should be able to answer. So when you're buying the tea, the first thing you should be able to ask, what year was this processed? And then what year, what season? Is it a spring? Is it a summer? Is it a winter? Is it an autumn pick? Um, a lot of the tea coming out of China is spring and summer. Um, your oolongs are often picked for uh, four seasons of the year. Um, in Taiwan, you can have all those seasons. Japan tends to be just a spring pick as well. But then if you're paying a lot more money for your spring pick green teas, then you'll want to know what part of the spring that that is actually coming from because the very early spring teas command some of the highest pricing. So you'll want to know, is it picked before April 20th? Is it picked in early March or late March, I should say? Is it be picked before the 20th of April? or after the 20th of April. And then it'd be great if your tea supplier can actually say what cultivar it is, especially with ones like Longjing, Oriental Beauty, Milk or Oolong. They should know the name of that cultivar because those particular Longjing uh, teas must come from a certain cultivar. And cultivar, I'm talking about the sub, the subspecies of Camellia sinensis plant. Then with oolongs, another step is they should be able to say to you, yes, there's a certain level of oxidization and then there's a baking level as well. Because these are all the elements that influence the oolong tea. It is based upon how long it's been oxidized for and how it's been baked as well. And then if it's real, if there's a really sound knowledge there, they should also be able to tell you the picking standard. Is it a bud only tea, or is it a bud only tea with a little bit of the first leaf in there as well? So 85% buds and about 15% first leaf, or is the picking standard a bud and two leaves, or a bud and one leaf? And so when you brew it, you can see that, see the bud and one leaf. Also importantly, they should be able to tell you what province, or even better still, what farm the tea came from. Instead of just China, or just Taiwan, or just Japan, or just India, or Sri Lanka. So to recap that, one, they should be able to tell you the province. Minimally, they should be able to tell you the year it was picked and they should be able to tell you the season of the picking as well. The more money you pay, you should be demanding a little bit more information. And in regard to oolongs, they should be able to tell you the oxidization level and the baking level of that oolong as well, because that's how you can tell what type of flavors to expect. And this is also with all the new blends that are coming out like green tea with rosebuds and and all these other blends these tea suppliers should also know the year of that tea the base tea they're using in their blends because that is very important especially if it's a green tea or whatever it makes you understand it helps you to understand the quality of the blend that you're receiving as well so if they can't answer these questions, I wouldn't be spending my money with them at all. And there's a lot of tea suppliers out there. So these are very simple questions. There should be a transparency of the source with any quality product. It's the same as what you expect from your food sources. It's the same as what you expect with your clothing sources as well. So tea should not be anything different 
And we're also expecting this from our coffee. We expect it from our craft beer. We expect it from our wine. We often know quality wine, who the winemaker is, the tea, uh, the cop wine, that, the wine estate that it comes from. Tea is absolutely no different. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. If there is something that you would like a little bit more clarification or if there's um, some questions I didn't answer um, that you can think of, please place it um, in the comments below and I will be happy or pleased to answer those. If you enjoyed the video, could you please give me the thumbs up? Uh, share it with your friends if you think they would find this inter interesting. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so, it's free. And we'll see you next time.